Uh, group B. Uh, right when Group B had been drawn. It's so interesting. RNG and Genji, who formerly is Samsung, have now been in the same group three years in a row. Mm -hmm. That was the group that TSM was in in 2016. That was the group that G2 was in last year. And this year, that's Vitality's group. But how do they keep getting in the same group? I don't know, but I do know that no one else gets out of that group. When they Not get the last the two years. Group. Um, I mean, yeah, as, as they were talking about, uh, th this is this has been the year of RNG, right? They've yeah. been title after title after title, and their next stop, you know, is the world championship. Mm -hmm. But they're going to have to go through the defending champions in the group stage, um, you know, if they want to get that number one seed and, and uh, have a better spot. Yeah, we're going to get to the group stage discussion in a bit. First up, though, we had the play and draw. Let's pull up that bracket to discuss that really quickly. As of last year, you have the pool one seeds looking to dominate this with EDG, G2, C9, and G-Rex. Interestingly, last year, the LMS three seed didn't win their group. Yeah. So then they matched up against Fnatic in that case in the best of five to actually make it into the group stage. Other than that though, the pool one seeds did dominate. How do you guys look at it this year? Yeah, I mean, that's really where I'm looking again is group D because I think that G-Rex is probably the only pool one seed I, I see realistically getting knocked out mm -hmm. uh, or having a chance at that. I think you, know, you could look at Supermassive as well as being one of the stronger teams, you know, from uh, some of these other regions that are in play-ins and, and, you know, it's a slumping G2 could perhaps have trouble with that, but I don't really see that uh, coming to fruition. Yeah, especially with G2 making the surge towards the yeah. end of the playoffs, I wouldn't necessarily like call them slumping anymore since yeah. they didn't make it into the regional qualifier. Yeah, I thought uh, it was actually pretty close to having Supermassive um, in Cloud9's group, which would have been GBM versus his old teammates, <laughs> Linkerish and Zazel, <laughs> who had played on EU United, and they were talking about it leading up to it as well, but they don't have to, you know, they might play for a now. spot in Worlds, you know, because uh, in, in the, the very knockout could, stage. Well, could if they got out of that group. But I, yeah, it's also really cool because Gambit, I know a lot of their fans were upset last yep. time about their hard road. Now, you know, uh, they've got another chance, and this one looks like a pretty good setup. Yeah, well, Gambit in the 2017 play-in failed to win a single game. Yeah. But at the MSI play-in, they did very well in the group stage only to play against the Flash Wolves, who once Flash Wolves started going on a roll in the group stage, they were like, we're actually super strong. We should have had these other teams. So uh, they have a good chance to prove themselves there if they can get the number one seed in the group. The thing that I always worry about in this play-in is there are three team groups and the top two teams essentially get to go into the bracket stage where the one seed will play a randomly drawn two seed from another group. So if any of the, so to speak, major regions falter, you can get some really wonky cross-play mm -hmm. stuff. So if, for instance, C9 or G2 finish second in their group, then there's a chance that C9 and G2 would play against each other to see who actually makes yeah. it into the group stage. Or even run into EDG, you know, and, and that yeah. that is pretty terrifying as well. And uh, I'm always really excited for the play also because like obviously there's going to be some very good games but also you look at the the group draw uh you know for for the main stage and you look at those three teams and your thoughts on how strong or how weak a group is can change pretty heavily based on that you know i think a lot of people are going to be looking at the tl group and saying oh that looks pretty good but if you pop edg in there and edg is looking really strong then that that starts becoming a, a lot more scary i think uh four teams in that group um so a lot really does i think come down to how the teams are performing in play and, and where they're going to get slotted into uh those other groups Groups. Yeah, I think most of the groups are going to have their eyes on EDG specifically because they made such a good improvement towards playoffs mm -hmm. and the regional qualifier Yeah, uh, that that's going to be the kind of danger as far as, you know, uh, when we get to the next stage. But again, if we do kind of, ex or at least I kind of expect mm -hmm. G2, Cloud9 also uh, to top their groups. So yeah. I don't expect there being Same. any of these, you know, major region or whatever, number twos getting drawn in. But, uh, you know, interesting things can happen with uh, changes in the yeah, like man. tournament meta. It's worlds. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> First time of play in, you're playing four group stage games, double round robin. But let's jump forward to the group stage. The play in will start October 1st, 1 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, but we're talking about the group stage draw now. So Group A, Group B, Group C, Group D, uh, Flash Wolves, Afrika Freaks, PVB. Let's start with that Group A, because that's uh, what looks like could potentially be a fairly easy group for Flash Wolves, who had 
finally, I feel like, a good draw as a pool mm. one. They seemingly usually have this pool one draw, and then you're never predicting them to get out of the groups. One interesting thing, though, is that uh, with EDG being the LPL team and LPL teams in B and D, uh, there is a chance EDG goes here. Mm -hmm. What's actually more likely, though, is that EDG will swap over to Group C, since with just the, with the way the draw works, if Group A isn't immediately EDG, EDG will have to slot into Group C. So there's a chance that I would say uh, something like a G2, a C9, or a G-Rex, or one of the other emerging regions hops into that group. Yeah, and I mean, I think it does look like a, like a fairly good draw, obviously, getting the Fungu Buffalo, getting them in there for Flash Wolves. They're going to be feeling really good about that draw, but I, but I also think Afrika is a really, really strong team, and I think Afrika is probably a team that I would favor actually above Flash Wolves. So, sure. you know, when you're, when you're looking at it from that perspective, if you then get EDG in there, or you then get, you know, a C9 or a G2 who are looking really on form, then that can be become a scary group uh, once again for Flash Wolves um, because I don't think that there are leaps and bounds above some of those top teams uh, that are going to be in play. Yeah, I, my first reaction to this group was um, like watching a Freak of Freaks. Keen is the guy who always stood out. Uh, mm. Probably my favorite top laner. Um, and then you also mm. mentioned uh, the Vietnamese team. Their star is their top laner. Uh, and this guy, I went back and watched, I found the uh, Vietnamese uh, YouTube VOD mm -hmm. uh, of their finals. He has insane mechanics. Um, he was he took Jace, he actually took Hextech Flash, and he had some very creative, <laughs> yeah, you're laugh now, yeah, but yeah, he yeah. had some really good um, escapes with it. And I think if it's going to be different from a lot of the rest of the world's meta, where these are some of the very few teams that are going to have super hard carry top laners and maybe play more around top lane. Uh, so that might throw Flash Wolves through a loop because I, Flash Wolves are yeah. still, you know, more bottom focus. And uh, it might be a bit of a mismatch there. Yeah, and I mean, listen, if you're a NA or EU viewer who mainly watches your domestic league and then the world championship, this group is going to be a lot of new teams to you. Right, Flash Wolves is the one that is at Worlds every year, so you're relatively familiar with them. But most people don't watch the LMS regular season. There's no English broadcast for this league. So there's not going to be too many people that know that. A Freak of Freaks making their first Worlds appearance. They got in on championship points. They were second in the spring and third place in the summer with that incredibly close best of five they played against Griffin. I actually yeah. thought that was one of the best uh, best of fives all year, even though Griffin didn't end up making to the Worlds. I want to echo Kobe's sentiment about Keen. I think he's the best top laner in the world. Actually. Really? In the I, I wow. think he's the best top laner in the world okay. right now. He was the Korean representative on the Asia Games team. He leads the league in kills for top laners. They play through him frequently. He has some of the best Let, laning stats let's hope, everyone. Let's hope they match up with IG at some point in this uh, tournament so yeah. we can have him versus That's Shy. what I was going to say, man. <laughs> uh, like, I'm just such a the Shy fanboy. I think he's actually insane. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to IG yeah. in a bit. Uh, I feel like even though the Shy has been amazing, the fact that they consistently spelled him with Duke, like even in the playoffs, mm -hmm. he's not as good as he was in spring to me, right? But yeah. uh, anyway, that's one, one statement there about Afrika Freaks. I think they are very strong but the question is how well will they adapt to the international stage which yeah. is always a question whenever you have a first time participant like this one thing i, I do think is going to kind of benefit them though is is they're not a team that's afraid to try different things right you know in the lck playoffs <laughs> and you know they were a team that was willing to bring out swain bot still uh when a lot of teams had stopped doing that they've played yasuo top they've played yasuo mid lane they can play like a lot of different aggressive picks and they are a team that is willing to to like experiment and to try new things and i think that we've seen uh pretty consistently throughout the years at worlds the teams that are willing to kind of take a chance on new emerging strategies, new emerging champions mm -hmm. are often the ones that are getting the advantage. You know, when I think back to last year, uh, everyone playing hyper carries, Kogma and things like this, when the Chinese teams brought out Caitlyn, when they figured out that answer and played Caitlyn Jason, start pushing all the turrets super fast, like that kind of took over, you know, in the world's meta. And I think this is a team that if something like that pops up, they're going to be having the confidence to actually kind of jump on it. What do you think about Flash Wolves in general? because every year it feels like if we say Flash Wolves is a top team, they fall out of groups. And if we say Flash Wolves actually isn't that strong because the LMS is really top heavy and they just do really well there, then they'll go seven and three in group stage, mm -hmm. or they'll be the number one seed out of the group like they were in 2015 when they beat uh, a Korean team twice to end up matching up against Origin in the quarterfinals. I know at MSI that Betty 
was a lot better than everyone expected. It Going into that tournament, everyone talked about Prey, Reckless, Uzi, Dublift as the 80 carries to watch. Mm-hmm. And then we didn't even put Betty on the graphic at the start. And then he had probably the second best group stage uh, of the 80 carries right behind Uzi and then probably just a little bit ahead of double if stats wise. So uh, I think that Betty gives them now that he's gotten better, a pretty good chance as yeah. a good team. I agree that they're below a freak of freaks, but how do you feel like they're going to do just kind of in the general tournament? I think they have a pretty good shot. I mean, especially coming off of uh, their MSI performance, you know, getting in groups there was was obviously solid. I think uh, Hanabi was another guy who really kind of stood out to me at MSI as being, you know, a really strong carry player. Obviously, mm-hmm. everyone's popping off about the Aso games, <laughs> but, um, you know, this is a team that, I do always find it hard to judge them because they're so far above their competition in the LMS. Like yeah. they went undefeated in summer. Yep. Um, they absolutely slammed in playoffs. Like this is a team that is just so much better than the people that they are playing against that it's it's really tough to, to actually judge because the rest of the LMS is so much weaker than a lot of these teams that I think they are going to be having to face up against at Worlds. So they are really ha- having to kind of kick it into a new gear. And I, I think honestly... One of the things that works against Flash Rolls, like I, I feel like if Flash Rolls got put into the LCK or whatever, they would become a much stronger team. Because when you're playing against weaker competition, it sometimes reinforces bad habits, right? You're learning, oh, this is what works against this, but maybe it's because the team isn't actually like effectively punishing you for doing something incorrectly. I think that's one of the things that does kind of, you know, maybe kind of hurt them a little bit going into this international competition. But I do still think they're strong. I do still think that they should be a favorite to get out of the group. Mm-hmm. Um, but beyond that, I think it's really hard to say just because the teams they're playing against aren't on, on this level. So it's really hard to judge. Yeah, I, I always do hear, though, that Flash Wolves do get scrims, mm-hmm. um, you know, with LPL and LCK teams at times. I hear they practice a lot with LPL teams yeah. Yeah. specifically. Um, yeah, they're so, supposed to be pseudo assistants. And, and I think that before. people really should give them more credit, especially this year. This is one of the most, you know, veteran teams. And our questions mm-hmm. about are they going to collapse without Carsa were already answered, I feel like. You know, I, I felt like Mujin stepped up. Uh, Hanabi was uh, very strong for them as well. So, and I don't think they, you know, had the as big of a drop off as people were thinking. Oh, mm-hmm. we're, you know, losing Carsa is like one of the major things. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that they're going to have a very solid showing. I think that people can be actually pretty sh- pretty sure on them as far as a lot of the teams here you know have lots of new members you know there's rookies and all this stuff flying around flash wolves i feel like you do know what you're gonna get um and they should be you know given more credit this time around okay so i think we're gonna be in agreement that a freak of freaks is the favor for the group yep flash was favor for second and pvb while they could be very exciting because they're coming from vietnam most of the region plays an incredibly flash high Jace. tempo <laughs> style he was he was their uh, league mvp yeah. Yeah. I do think they're big underdogs in this mm-hmm. group, even after the play in team is added in. But let's play a fun game here. Let's just say that C9 or G2 gets put into this group. If we're talking about Flash Wolf strength, do you still have them as the favored team for second place in the group? I think so. I think, I think, yeah, we probably should, you know, looking at like, I don't think G2 has. Has been as strong, uh, you know, since they lost Venomithi um, overall. So t- to me, I think that was a pretty big hit to the team. I think that C9, while at, at their top end, have looked very good. They got dismantled in the finals. Uh, I th- still think that they have a tremendous amount of inexperience. You know, you don't really know how those guys are going to perform on the world stage. You know, guys like Ligerish and, and Blabber and Zazel, uh, I still think... You know, there's some uncertainty about like what six should even be run. How is that going to affect the team, uh, you know, as a whole, you know, when they're mm-hmm. going up against this tough competition. So I think Flash Wolves should be favored, but I don't think it's by a lot. And I actually think that uh, it's kind of funny, like when you add in that fourth team that while I don't think uh, PVB would get out of the group, I do think that a team like that can sometimes decide the group because yeah. it's who do they steal a game off of. Uh, that you know that can kind of kick them down and, and make sure that that team is dragged out of the competition with them because you know this is uh, formerly Young Generations, uh, you know another team from mm-hmm. uh, Vietnam and and like we've seen what Gigabyte Marines can do, we've seen that Vietnam is getting stronger and stronger as a region uh, and that there is a lot of talent there. So you know a team like that certainly could be the kind of uh, disrupting factor. And I feel like again this this team one of the biggest things uh, is going to be. Our team's ready to play around top lane, right? And put a lot of mm-hmm. resources there because 
he, he's been in, uh, I forget which uh, stream it was, but I was watching a Korean challenger uh, and he was actually versus Keen. Yeah. He was, you know, mechanically outplaying him. So I was right. like, this guy is actually insane mechanics. Watching the VOD, yeah, like the macro and some a lot yeah. of the teleports. It's a lot of fighting. The teleports in the lane assignments were kind of hectic because there's so many kills uh, and the, the pace of the uh, games are so quick. But I think, I really think that guy is going to put a lot of pressure on any top laner that he does face. Yeah, that's going to be uh, one of the interesting groups at Worlds. I don't think there's a non-interesting group at Worlds. Let's get on to Group B here, because that was the RNG, Genji, formerly Samsung, <laughs> classic. the defending world champions, mm -hmm. third year in a row that they're in the same group. And this was the moment in the draw uh, where TL still hadn't been drawn yet. 100 Thieves was already in Group D, so it's like, well, there's a really good chance that TL gets thrown in this group. And it ended up being Vitality. Yeah. So I'm... I apologize to Europe for that disappointment as well. Vitality, the number two seed from the EU LCS. They get an off of championship points. They finished fourth in spring, third in summer, winning the best of five over Misfits in the third place game to kind of earn that spot. Uh, mm -hmm. Initially, I think there's a lot of people that would say, like just from the outside, oh, Vitality, are they similar to like 100 Thieves situation where there's a lot of people in the region that don't think they should go? Uh, the answer is no. Vitality did surge up to second place at the end of the regular season, winning a three-way tiebreaker to get the second seed. They were upset in the semifinals, but then bounced back in the third place match against Misfits. So it feels like they definitely deserve this. Big note on the Vitality season was Kikis coming in uh, halfway through the split, essentially mm -hmm. going on a huge run. Vettius voted it, him the MVP of the league and they, a few other people. They did literally well. went nine and one since he yeah. joined They're, or in the regular season. They only dropped one game since he joined. Uh, and that was super cool because at the beginning, uh, a lot of the talk was Jizuke, you know, and when mm -hmm. he first started in spring, you know, on the rise and uh, pulling out a lot of big plays. But uh, Kikis and the way that he uh, joined the team and kind of led the jungle invades mm -hmm. was cool to watch, right? Because then it was kind of Jizuke following him on these jungle invades and then playing this really aggressive early game style. Um, so I think that like they'll make the games exciting mm -hmm. like you're talking about it's a super stacked group to be yeah. put into though so i mean it's just ridiculously hard to fight through <laughs> yeah. rng and uh gen g even though um like this the entire summer wasn't that great for them their gauntlet run as well mm -hmm. just re-inspires all the confidence right <laughs> and this is especially the finals against kings yeah and they they made back-to-back -back finals this is going to yeah. be possibly the third year where Samsung's going for finals, they could, you know, mm -hmm. uh, make it there every single one. Uh, right. Group of death? Yeah, I think so, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think immediately just with the first two teams. Mm -hmm. uh, like, because the thing is, you know, I, I don't give Vitality much of a chance, but it's not like I would give uh, any of these other, you know, teams yeah. that could have been slotted in yeah. there much of a chance either, right? Like, I think I think that it's it's pretty brutal group. And it's a group that has, uh, you know, a lot of experience. Uh, you have arguably the tournament favorite uh, that a lot of people are saying RNG, you know, is favored to win this whole thing. They've been dominating internationally for a while. Uh, Gen G obviously has a tremendous amount of experience. If you want to count them as formerly Samsung, this is potentially their third world championship that they could win. Mm -hmm. um, so certainly a, a ton of experience on these rosters, and they're they're extremely talented teams, right? So this is a huge ask for any team that could have been slotted into there. And I think. Yeah. Um, it's very unlikely that Vitality get out of that group, but if you do make it out, if you do pull that off, then all of a sudden, you know, you're you're dodging a lot of those teams, those toughest teams in quarters, uh, and then maybe you get a more favorable quarterfinal matchup, and maybe some magic happens. Man, like when when you say that, RNG, many people's favorites for the World Championship, uh, I think along with KT, and then you look at every single Pool Two team that could possibly be with RNG, you would have to say Gen G. Or Freak of Freaks are the hardest one. Yeah. Right? So the, of the two hardest ones that would get pulled in as the Korean team, that immediately happens. And then it's, like you say, any third team that gets pulled in yep. there is immediately an underdog. This this group could still get more death-like. Uh, C9 could get drawn into this group as well. Yeah. I mean, what do you, what specifically, though, about the matchups, like, what do you think is going to happen here? Because uh, Gen G are one of these teams. There's a bunch of teams that are coming to this world who have used multiple subs yeah um and once you have to whittle it down 
uh, do you go with ambition to have, mm. you know, jungle, double jungles are always super valuable because the other jungle can watch the routes, come in with a fresh perspective. Also unpredictable from the enemy jungler, you know, trying to find out patterns and ambition has a lot of leadership, but then also, um, you know, crown versus fly. My, my immediate assumption, and I think it's kind of similar to what I think is gonna happen with C9 is that most pros I talk to, most coaches I've talked to favor having double jungle. They feel like that is the more valuable, uh, you know, kind of style to run. And despite the fact that Fly actually played significantly, you know, he played more than Crown did throughout the regular season. Crown was the guy that they were using mostly in the playoff run. Yep. Um, he was the guy that they used exclusively in in the Gauntlet Finals. That to me was was He's the guy who they won with. <laughs> yeah. So that that to me like was the decision, and that sucks for Fly because Fly I think had had a good yeah. year, and I think that you know, he, as I said, he played more than Crown did but i think that already kind of showed what's going to happen i don't think you leave ambition at home i don't think you leave Her uh, haru at home after the run they had in gauntlet because i actually thought that haru was one of the biggest difference makers some of his plays were insane like the predictive uh he predicted a flash with a gragas barrel throws it where the mm -hmm. caitlin's gonna flash knocks it back in uh his lee sing kick. he played one lee sing game instantly banned against him next yeah. game <laughs> i mean it was insane he like cues cues to the scion warthog kick flashes yeah. uh Jin that's a whole screen away from him into the team automatically wins the fight like he was making some sick plays so i feel like you want to have uh, that jungle option. Yeah, I mean, I, I love it when we see people drawing Lee Sin bands That's already nice. leading up to Worlds because I've seen so many of these kind of legacy Lee Sin players kind of return to that champion. Mm -hmm. um, that diverts from the point that I set up in the beginning though because <laughs> my same question that I have for Gem G works for RNG and I feel bad for Abel because I feel like, you know, if you're the guy who's subbing in for yeah. Uzi, then you're going to be the one that's left out also. I mean, RNG have plentiful subs as R well. RNG has like an eight man roster. So, you got Let Me and Zatai in the yeah, top lane. You got exactly. Carson MLXG, you got Uzi Nable. And once again, I think it is gonna be the double jungle yeah. um, because like they did kind of at MSI and all these tournaments, they, they've they kind of tried to like save Karsa a little bit for later, it feels like. Mm -hmm. Maybe use MLXG earlier on in best of ones um, where, you know, surprise factor. Uh, yeah, is able to pull off and then have Carsa for best of fives. Um, it worked and, at MSI, right? Like I feel like they're probably just, gonna stick. With yeah, it. I know, but it just feels so bad for all these subs because each one of these teams are like, ah, you know, well, you, good luck. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Carsa seems to be the guy they put in in the high pressure situations. Talk, talking about the matchup, just uh, RNG versus Genji, right? Who's going to win the group is always a big question. In 2016, it was Samsung. In 2017, it was RNG who too old them, but it was ultimately Samsung who ended up being the world champion. Uh, this year, Genji definitely comes in looking a lot weaker. They're actually fifth place spring, fifth place summer, yep. but then ran the gauntlet as they seemingly always do in Korea. 3-2 mm -hmm. over SKT, 3-2 over Griffin, who most people expected to make it to Worlds, either by winning the final yeah. or by winning the gauntlet. I almost want to make like a sub podcast to RIP Griffin because I feel like they were so Yeah, that's, that's one of the greatest tragedies. Uh, they're not going to be at Worlds. I mean, Tarzan and Viper, I really wanted to see them. Yeah. Those two specifically play so much, but yeah. Uh, now yeah. I, then they three out King Zone to make <laughs> it here, so they they deserve it. They ran the gauntlet. They are the third best team from Korea yeah. as of this moment. They're the defending world champions, which is always nice. So while while I think you know a lot of people are like, when you look at like the last series they played, they slam Kingzone, and you want to be like, yeah, Genji's back, right? Like mm -hmm. some of their they got slammed by Afrika uh, in playoffs, like they got absolutely demolished. Um, and I and I do think that one of the reasons I kind of favor RNG, um, you know, in this group over Genji is the fact that they looked somewhat inconsistent even within the series. When you look at their SKT series, when you look at their Griffin series, it felt like when they lose, they lose so hard. It didn't feel like they had the ability to play from behind very well, um, that there was a lot of stomps. And they were, to their credit, very good at snowballing victories mm -hmm. when they got ahead. But, like, it was so back and forth that... Um, I feel like you have to be like almost like a more stable team. You have to be able to play somewhat from a deficit and, and give yourself those shots to like drag out a game to late and try to come back in it. Uh, and it didn't feel like they were really able to do that in some of these series uh, where I felt like that was one of their biggest strengths last year. Um, and I feel like it, it's going to be tough. Like RNG has such strong laning that if you get behind and if you can't come back from that, that's... Yeah, on top of that, uh, RNG, when they've been behind, uh, you know, several thousand gold, there's so many games 
where they still win one team fight around mid lane, mm -hmm. push in, take almost half the mm -hmm. base, and then the game is done a couple of minutes later. It, it just feels so hard to be able to finish against RNG. Right. Uh, you know, even the, all, so many of these teams They're have been able land. to get a lead versus them um, and not been able to pull it off. I mean, the finals versus IG was insane. Like the game five, mm -hmm. you know, the two inhibitors available, and uh, you feel like it's so close, but. Yeah, yeah. I, you just kind of have to give it uh, over to RNG. I favor RNG. I mean, they come in as the more recent international tournament champions, MSI champions. They've won two splits in the LPL in a row. They're, in my opinion, the best team fighting team in the world. Yeah. Thinking about the way they play, Xiaohu is a guy who in previous years we had as top five, top ten player in the world, and he actually takes a back seat to Uzi and does it really well. He pretty much plays exclusively pushing mid laners uh, when they're really tryharding. Let me is often one of the best tank players in the mm -hmm. world. Uzi and Ming best duo lane in the world. I don't think the meta is in a place where that's not a good strategy. It's always possible that, you know, we could be in a meta where, Oh, it's lethality Varus and Jin. It's like, well, then RNG wouldn't be good, but mm -hmm. we have uh, pretty strong 80 carries in the meta right now. Kaisa still exists. There were vein buffs before yep. Worlds. You're going to be able to play late game dominant 80 carries and get by. Uh, or you can play lane dominant 80 carries and still do well with all the support bands that you see mm -hmm. uh, to control the lane. So I do favor RNG, but I wouldn't count out Genji. I think especially when you're playing double round Robin, best of ones, very foreseeable that Genji clutches it out. Because while I agree with you that they didn't, look great in a lot of the regular season they actually haven't won an lck split but they keep making it to the world final so this team finds a way to hit a different gear when it comes to the world championship jailing yeah i mean uh they kept talking about it on the cast too during the gauntlet run about uh specifically qv and his mm -hmm. you know the playoff buff or gauntlet buff or you know whenever world starts coming around he's super and good during the regular season they're like ah okay why were we ever getting so excited and then in the gauntlet boom oh yeah this is why <laughs> and his atrox is coming in uh super hot making big plays so i'm always super excited to see them back on it too because uh, in those games, Ruler also really mm -hmm. um, got me excited once again. He had this play where I had not seen this very often, but um, Rakan engage. Uh, Gorilla kept trying to get the you know super fast ultimate mm -hmm. flash W onto him, and he would just Varus ult him, stand there, and stop the Rakan like inches in front <laughs> of his face, uh, like just completely standard play for him or something, and yeah. nailed it multiple times in a row. So I started to get re-excited for mm -hmm. Samsung, for our uh, Gen.G. Ruler is super good. Yeah. Like, don't forget about that. Like, there's there's very, very good AD carries in the world. He is in a group with Uzi, which makes it impossible to rank him as the best. But he is extremely good as an AD carry. I think he is extremely good, but I also think Uzi is better. And I think RNG plays around Uzi better than, than Gen.G plays around Ruler, right? And that's why I feel like it has to be more of there there has to be kind of some some sort of a difference maker and to me that's where i look at jungle that's where i look at top you know if if you have a game where it's uh Kuve, like dominating top lane you know playing carry pick really taking over these sort of things uh or you know haru is able to make really big plays or ambition is really invading and getting ahead and in, in that regard then i think you can really kind of disrupt what rng is trying to do and maybe take over a game but it feels hard to like try to play uh, a bot lane centric game against rng and win that because they're just so good at it like not only do they have the best dual lane i think they play around their dual lane the best okay so i think we're mostly going to say rng favorite in the group yeah. Gen G second but i would then like to say you know since we've clearly done all the prep we're ever going to need to do uh i'm going to watch a lot more vods after this draw since we have still like two weeks until group stage but what's your percentage chance that rng is first Right? I, I, give it, I give it, uh, I mean, I think it's it's significant, 60-40, something like that. But, like, you know, it, it's not unforeseeable. 60 is not that. No, but, I mean, it's, you know, it's about a two-thirds, right? Like, or 66, 33, whatever you want to say. Like, I'll, I'll give it around that, like, which is a significant edge above uh, Samsung. But Samsung is within striking distance. And, and also, you can't take it a... You can't take it for granted how well they have performed at Worlds specifically, as you said, you know, not winning splits, but really mm -hmm. turning it on. Even last year, uh, we weren't super excited about them, you know, I think coming into the tournament compared to how they performed at the tournament. So, yeah, I mean, I I might even give it a little bit more than that. 
Um, but yeah, I think most people will be in agreement for for this yeah. group. I'd go seventy percent RNG wins. Um, but I'd also put like a, you can give Vitality one percent or yeah, half a well, percent. Hold on, exactly. Or... I'm gonna say a five percent that one of these two doesn't make it out of groups. Okay. okay. Because you can still have uh, a C9 drawn in there. They seemingly always find a way to make it out of groups, even if they get put in the group of death. Kobe. But SKT is in that world, so how does C9 get out of groups? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're always in SKT's group. Well, they can go into a different defending champions group <laughs> in Genji and find. Man, wouldn't that be? That would be the wildest storyline if Gen G and C9 made it out of the group with RNG. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is that is extremely unlikely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> any more any more fun unlikely. facts about teams in this group before I move on to Group C? No, we put spent a lot of time on this. Yeah. One. Uh, Vitality is the best early game team in Europe. I'm just gonna throw that out there yep. by the numbers, but they're also good luck, group Vitality. Group. Yeah. yeah. Group C. Uh, this one is super fun. KT Roaster, Mad Team, the number two team from the LMS, Team Liquid, and TBD. Very likely to be EDG though. Yeah. Or D2. Yes, yeah. but more likely to be EDG since there is no LPL team in uh, Group A. Mm -hmm. So if EDG doesn't immediately get drawn in there, that means they go in Group C. Yeah. So I put it a 75% chance to get EDG in yeah. this group. Which I think makes it a, a pretty tough group, right? Because the, the thing is, it's like while EDG you know, did end up the third seed and they, they had kind of a, a rougher uh, summer split than they normally do, their regular season one isn't as strong. They really did start to turn it on a lot more towards the end in playoffs, in the gauntlet. Like they looked a lot stronger. And I think that an EDG that is continuously improving and that is, you know, playing at their kind of top end uh, is going to make it a very, very difficult group. And I think them specifically versus Team Liquid would be an interesting matchup because mm -hmm. EDG started to play more around bottom lane, more early game. Yep. So if you have Ray on a tank versus Impact up on a tank, uh, it's kind mm -hmm. of back to when Ray was uh, in North America. Yeah, LCS. Sword and Shield bash into each other. Yeah, and then it's two teams that are trying to play carry from the bottom side. But I think that uh, EDG would probably have more action early. Uh, and so that seeing if, uh, you know, Team Liquid can keep enough vision to see it coming or react to it. Uh, otherwise, you know, KT in this group is the one that everyone's going to point to. Obviously, they play extremely uh, lane dominant, uh, dominant mm -hmm. and uh, they're probably still going to have the edge, even if EDG does get put in here. Who wins in a fight, a sword or a shield? <laughs> I think the shield just wins. Right? Because well, shields can also be used just, as bludgeoning just objects. You yeah. just have a shield and the guy just has a sword? I take yeah. the guy with a sword. Yeah. I take For the guy with like 100%. Shield. What? The guy you with the sword. It, just bash it with the shield. Yeah, really. It's, okay. Well, we're not going to get into this, but yeah. But, yeah. Uh, someone who's an but expert in like medieval warfare is going to so tell us. So you can st hit people with a shield yeah. and use it as a weapon. You can also block, block with, with your sword. sword. But I, I, the sword is sharp, so you can actually yeah. you know, get cut. Shields are sharp, than, too. Like the rather than just stuff. smashing people on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you have a shield that's got a giant spike on it. <laughs> a sword on the shield. Uh, sorry, I just, when you said that, I thought, what would happen if a sword actually fought a shield? Uh, uh, er, shield early before. morning thoughts here with Jack. Yeah. Uh, KT in this group. Uh, do you guys agree with this? I think KT is the best team at the world <laughs> At, no. the, at the World Championship. I, I, do, I, I think don't they should be favored slightly above RNG. When you look at, at player for player across every single role, mm -hmm. it doesn't look to me like KT has any weak spots. You are way too excited about yeah. KT, Listen, actually. Uh, okay, I think... I <laughs> no think, weak spots? Who, who's the... You think Mako no, I mean, has just, the weak spot? Just like as a team, you think they have no weaknesses? I think when you compare them to other other teams they have a top two or top three in every position which no other team at the world championship can say i think it's really close between kt and rng but i actually think kt should be the favorites coming in yeah i mean the thing thing for me is i always feel like when you looked individually at kt you're like yeah these guys are so good they're the best mm -hmm. but why didn't they succeed in the past right and i think that's always kind of one of the questions is that sometimes like having the, the best individual pieces doesn't make the best whole. Um, and they're LCK be, champs now, man. They are. They are. Uh, and it'll be very interesting to see um, how they're going to actually be able to perform. Like, I, it, it always feels bad to say this because, you know, it's kind of like maybe taking away from their win a little bit. But I did feel like a lot of those uh, those wins were kind of in Griffin's hands in the finals. I, I felt like Griffin, um, 
you know, if you play that series a couple times, I feel like Griffin wins it more often, which is, and then Griffin didn't even make it, uh, which mm-hmm. is kind of weird to say, but uh, it felt like Griffin fell prey, prey to nerves. Um, so I don't come away from that thinking that KT is like unbeatable and unassailable. I think that they're very, very strong, um, but I think it's it's pretty even between RNG and them. Um, well, well, and just because RNG has done so well over the last year, I feel like I give them a slight edge. One interesting thing about this world championship is I don't think there is an unassailable yeah, perfect I agree. team. Yeah. Uh, but Kobe? Yeah, we've moved on from that point. I mean, the the reign of SKT was this has been long dead now, and we haven't really had a replacement. Yeah, and then when the team that beat SKT like squeaks in yeah. through the regional yeah. qualifier, there's no super dominant team. Maybe uh, it's RNG. If they win worlds, I think you know RNG becomes somewhat uh, of that super dominant I mean, they've team. They've built a good up. resume this year so far. Yep. But you really need that crowning jewel at the end to make uh make a real statement yeah uh talking about mad team as well the number two seed from the lms lms is always what we look at as a uh top heavy region we keep saying that uh this team actually made a bit of a surge down the stretch they were the third place team in the spring even though they were six and eight in the regular season then in the summer they had a pretty big improvement went ten and four but were swept by flash wolves in the final so i put this team significantly below the yeah. flash wolves and even though flash wolves has made inconsistent amounts of noise at world championships it's been a fairly consistent thing that lms2 or lms3 has not done that well so i definitely put this team fairly significantly behind team liquid uh when i'm power ranking the three teams already in this mm-hmm. group with kt kind of alone at the top Team Liquid kind of in the middle. And then I think Mad pretty far towards the bottom. As far as pool two teams that could be in this group, yeah. uh, probably the second best option for TL. I yeah. think, I feel like they're going to be the, like, ranked the lowest team in the group, no matter who slots in, because it's going to be G2 or EDG. Uh, and I think I would I would put both of those teams, you know, a significant mark above them as well. Um, so I, I do think that, you know, as, as far as looking at it from that perspective, it's, you know, it's a good draw for TL. It's a good draw for a uh, four KT to not right. have, you know, that additional team that should be able to kind of challenge on that level. Um, but I do think that it feels like a one horse race for first place. I, I think that TL, it does not match up that well against, you know, a, a lot of these teams that are just kind of so, so strong because TL plays like a very, very standard style. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I look at TL, I kind of, I'm like, well, you're kind of doing what RNG is doing, but just kind of worse. Right. And and that makes it really tough. I think if you're not uh, going to throw a curveball at a team like KT, I think KT is just too strong, too well-rounded, like individually, as you say, they have some mm-hmm. of the best players in every single role. So I think that becomes very, very tough for TL unless they can find uh, some other way to mix things up, whether it's advantages you can get in pick and ban, uh, you know, strategies that they can discover that can give them an advantage. But if you just play standard, if you play the same picks, I think that uh, you you have to give like heavy favorites to uh, to KT. Yeah, back to Mad Team though, because a lot of people won't know you know much about this team. Yep. As, again, LMS. Um, is a top-heavy team, and people are just used to tuning in at the international competitions yeah. and seeing see Flash Wolves, right? Um, or AHQ. But mm-hmm. this team is actually uh, kind of born out of the AHQ Challenger team. Their top three uh, players, the top three of the map, I mean, um, are from that team, and then they added in the bottom lane duo uh, free signing. And those guys play together for have played together for a long time, and they mm-hmm. played around the bottom lane a lot. That's why I think... You're going to say this about most teams, uh, the majority of the teams at the World Championship coming in, right? Bottom lane focus. There aren't a lot of, you know, top lane focus uh, teams here. There are some, and that's why it made... uh, And they're all in Group A. Group A more (laughs) more unique to me. But again, this is another team that is going to be, um, you know, kind of focused on that. And um, I... I agree that yeah, it's it's going to be difficult uh, for them, but I think it's going to be cool to see uh, a lot of these guys getting their chance on the world stage, you know, mm-hmm. uh, to try and prove themselves because they have made such a you know big difference. And I and I think again, you know, similar to to what kind of what I talked about in Group A with PVB, you know, if you you pull in an EDG or whatever into this group and it becomes like a very tough group, anyone who then drops a, a game to mm-hmm. G Rex. You are probably or, not. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Mad. That's uh, a mad. Yeah. Uh, you are probably not getting out of the group, right? Like just that one game can uh, really knock you out. So you know you have to be so consistent, and it is best of ones. So you know dropping even one game can can mean the difference. Exactly. I mean, we saw TL at MSI dropping a game to Evos. Yep. Right. Uh, and Evos. then you lose on a tiebreaker. Yep. Vietnamese team 
I'm excited, just switching up a little bit, to see score in this group. Mm -hmm. Every jungler I talk to uh, in NA, in EU, I'm like, hey, who's the best jungler? It's almost unanimously score, even really? though the dude hasn't shown up to Worlds. Who you're, you're not getting any Tarzan in there. I've even heard Karsa. Okay, so Tarzan was getting definitely some of the hype yeah. uh, in the you're summer You're pretty split. much on the uh, score hype train, though, aren't you? Uh, I, I've I, been on the score hype train for a couple years. Yeah. Yeah, and Kobe, you're a huge score guy. I feel like anytime we ever talk about jungle, you're like, score, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. I think I had score as... But I uh, just want the other junglers to get fair representation. Like Kobe24. <laughs> Why is no one talking about him? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was. I always try and make the world's top top 20 players at world's list prior to all the teams qualifying yeah. and then kind of pare down from there. Uh And when KT didn't qualify last year, I had to delete like four players from the list. Mm. And score was the highest one on KT Rolster. I don't necessarily think yeah. that much has changed. His pathing has been so consistent. Mm -hmm. He was an 80 carry early on in his career. That skill still transfers over mechanically when he plays stuff like Kindred. He's matched up with now, I think, uh, UCAL in the mid lane, the young gun, so to speak, taking over for Pawn, who was the weakness for that team, I think, in the past, uh, did kind of take that team to... A new level and i just i love watching score playing with so many different tools yeah and there's a lot of playmakers in the jungle right now I, I think he's just such a smart jungler and i think that's that's the biggest reason that people credit him so heavily like he seems to know how to play from every situation extremely mm -hmm. well you know it, it's something that people cut it you know smithy with sometimes but i think score is just better at it right it's, yeah. it's something like if you if you give him a lead if he gets ahead at all he's taking your camps over and over and over he's warding up your jungle he's always in your face if he's behind he knows how to uh, kind of intuit where you're going to be on the map and be somewhere else and farm and catch up or make a play somewhere like he just always feels like he's at the right place which i think is is like that's kind of the pinnacle of jungling mm -hmm. right like jungling is time management it's it's investing your your time as a resource into okay am i going to farm a camp or am i going to encounter gank and score just seems to do that better than than pretty much everyone else which i think uh is what's so impressive about him yeah, and they like to play strong lanes a lot mm -hmm. to really enable him and go for a lot of those, you know, earlier uh, aggressive plays to put the enemy jungler off of their path and off of their normal game. So that will be fun to watch, especially in this group. But I also, as soon as I saw Team Liquid put in here with mm -hmm. KT, I was like, yes, we get a rematch. Uh, Deft and Mata versus Doublelift. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite <laughs> interviews of all time was Doublelift. Um, what was it? Oh, was it no. 2016? I think it was 16, was it? yeah. Yeah, so that would have been Uzi Mata. Um, right? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uzi yeah. Mata. But it's still the double first Mata. It was specifically, yeah. he was like, Mata, he's just so crazy. Like, there, no one else would have gone, you know, for this Alistar initiation mm -hmm. onto me. That's the only reason why it worked. <laughs> yeah. uh, is after Mata, like, trashed him super hard. It, like, perfectly engages, like, five times over yeah. in the yeah. same game. And he was um, getting a lot of flack for not flashing any of them. And this was his response. And he was that. like, well, m this Mata guy, he's just, like, crazy. Why is he going for, you know, all these uh, plays? Mm -hmm. So I want to see this matchup again because they've both had time. Uh, they both have new partners that they're playing with. Yeah. Um, and and this time around, Dolphus could be like, ah, I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know what's coming here, Martha. I mean, it's going to be a good indicator of how far Team Liquid could realistically go, right? When he's up against that quality of a bottom lane, mm -hmm. when Team Liquid is a team that has to win with their bottom lane doing well, if they lose against this, and you're like, okay, what's their ceiling? quarterfinals yeah. maybe not even in the group stage if you're talking about uh, like an eye and mako coming into this as well they'd have to be able to match up against them if they're up against edg it's one, gonna be really interesting it really is and one thing that's interesting is like you know you're talking about they have to win through bottom lane and i agree with that but i think when i when i think about msi and why they failed there i think more about mid lane and and how pole belter kind of wasn't able to often hold up his end of the bargain in, in some of this right it's like mm -hmm. okay well if you want to play through bottom lane the rest of the map has to hold up and has to survive until your until your marksman is strong enough where you can team fight and you can win right and mm -hmm. and pole belter i think wasn't able to do that in a lot of the games at msi and i think once they swapped over to malzahar and once they were playing more of these kind of like you know safe mids where it wasn't about him out playing in the 1v1 i think they did better um but i do have a lot of questions about how TL is going to play, like what style they're going to try to employ. Or are they going to have him? All right, you're on Malzahar, Morgana, Galio, and Zillion, right? Like, or are they going to say, all right, let's get it. Like, it's it's uh, it's a Zoe, great. You want to play Yasuo or Aurelia into it? Go for it, right? Like that, I think will will kind of decide a lot of of how they look in this tournament and how he can perform. And while I think Yukal is really really good, I don't think that 
UCAL and, and I'm, I'm forgetting the, the mid laner from Ad, but like, I don't think that these are the toughest mids that they could have gotten in the tournament. I think that uh, a lot of the LPL mids are absolutely insane. And I think that some of the other mids uh, can be more dominant than UCAL. So uh, as far as as far as that goes, maybe that's a positive uh, for TL. I liked um, Paul Belter's interview after they won finals and he spoke a little bit about um, the previous experience mm -hmm. in international competition and everyone, uh, you know, all the community kind of focusing on him and, mm -hmm. and that really affecting his play and his confidence. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the Team Liquid members have been very outspoken about how good their uh, – sports psychologists have been mm -hmm. um and uh, and their coaching staff at helping them kind of re regain confidence in themselves and and have that mentality of going in not defaulting to defensive play or yeah. you know only mouse hard and stuff like that so i am super curious to see how mm -hmm. Uh, they do take that matchup because that has been one of the biggest things for Team Liquid at international competition, right? We just had um, at MSI, Ole, uh, and he also talked about him as well, you know, making big progress as far as his mm -hmm. self-confidence and, um, you know, the big self-benching self self yeah. thing. Um, so this is really the time for a lot of the members there to, um, you know, play strong and, uh, you know, prove that they have made pretty big changes yeah. yeah in answer to your what do i think they'll do with paul belter question i think they're going to try and approach it like they did the finals against c9 where i thought they put a pretty high priority into getting a better jungle mid 2v2 mm -hmm. than the opponent and in that they almost deprioritized double lifts lane is because they were getting kaisa every time so they knew he'd turn online late game no matter what uh, i think that's probably the better play for tl their in-game style is around bottom lane, but their draft is around jungle mid duo, if that makes sense. Uh, obviously, against KT, you're kind of picking your poison. Yeah. But I think against the other teams in their group, that's probably what they should do. It'll it'll be it'll be really interesting because I think it, it is tough, right? It's it's one of those things. Do you try to draft and for for all, this goes for all the teams in mm -hmm. the tournament? Do you draft to cover weaknesses or do you draft to emphasize strengths, right? Mm -hmm. Because while I do think you know Double if can can get away with uh, drafting Kaisa and playing against you know Sneaky and Zazel and and maybe you know even if without a lot of priority there, maybe he can be okay against them. But if if you get EDG in there, I don't know that you can actually uh, you know hold up in the same way against iBoy. I don't know that mm -hmm. you can uh, do the same thing against uh, Deft and Model. Well, I'm pretty certain you probably can't, right? Like if they get lane advantage picks, then I don't know that TL would hold up in that regard. So. Uh, that's going to answer a lot of questions. And I think that there's like a lot to prove for TL as a whole and for all the individuals, you know, Doublelift, while he's regarded so highly in North America, he's never really had that world success. Uh, Smithy has never done as well as he had wanted that world's impact. There's a lot of criticism to his carry play. Like for all these guys, there's mm -hmm. questions, Ole self-benching, Poe Belter and his MSI performance. But that's true uh, for a lot of these players. So At least heading into it, Doublelift does have the uh, super strong individual MSI performance, performance at really MSI, good. international competition. I know he said that was big for him as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, to prove to himself that like he can be extremely good on the international stage. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to follow that up, though, because there was an interesting point about the jungle mid duos. The uh, Mad Team's jungler got the All-Pro Award, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, you're, you're used to just having flash rolls at the yep. top and getting everything. Um, but their jungler also very strong and does play a lot around bottom side. Yeah. So... Don't, you know, count this team out. It's, yep. Everyone's like, ah, it's all mess and it's not Flash Wolves or whatever. Uh, they, I can definitely see them in group stages, you know, you know, surprising people, especially for them bottom side and taking games. Yeah, going to be fun to watch TL. I hope they do well. If it's mm -hmm. EDG in the group, I wouldn't favor them to make it out of the group. And I would be pleasantly surprised if they did. However, if it's not EDG in this group, I think TL should be able to make it out. Uh, KT, very clearly a favorite for me in this group. Yeah. You guys pretty much on the same page? Yep. You got anything different? Totally. Sweet. Group D of Worlds so far. We got Fnatic. 100 Thieves got drawn into this, but so did Invictus Gaming. Uh, let's start with IG for this one because they went 17, 18 and 1 actually in both regular splits, spring and summer. However, they lost in the semifinals to RNG in spring, 3 to 2. And they lost to RNG in the finals in summer, three yep. to two, but made it in points. Uh, rookie, the LPL MVP. But what do you want to talk about to start with IG? IG has so much stuff that I'm excited about. For me, I like 
I immediately go to the shy though because I I'm just I just think that this guy is so insane. Uh, he plays so many different champions. Um, a lot of the LPL top laners do have that, but the shy it feels like it's one of the only teams. Like we were talking about this, Kobe. You know how many teams actually play through top? I think mm -hmm. IG is one of the teams that can. Um, and the shy had played 16 unique champions in summer alone. Uh, like he can basically play everything. He's a solo queue monster. He's mechanically so good. So like, and they are very heavily willing to prioritize uh, red side and counter picks and, and playing through that. Uh, so I think that they're a very scary team because they can give you a different look. Um, but also having MVP in the mid lane, like uh, I think rookie, uh, we were talking about this chat. Like I, I think he's the best Zoe I've seen in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Like he, he has played, pulled off some pretty incredible stuff. And I think uh, while IG certainly did lose to RNG, um, that was very close as well. It was extremely close. And I don't think that they're far below RNG at all. I think mm. um, they are certainly a team that I would put just off the top of my head, probably top three, top four uh, in this tournament. Um, so I think that they're really strong. They almost never lose to anyone but RNG. Yep. That's, yeah. That's that's how, how dominating it is. Um, again, on, on top of it, though, this is such an exciting team because this is one of the you know top teams where – if you also look at the stats, they have highest kills per minute combined kills mm -hmm. per minute for their mm -hmm. games. With shortest game times, um, they have so much early focus, so much on dominating lanes and winning mm -hmm. your lane, and then actually winning the game. Uh, how how there there always seems to be this disconnect where people are like, oh yeah, they just this early game, you know, trying to have strong, uh, you know, lanes, and and then they <laughs> they kind of fumble the mid game or whatever. Yeah. ID just ends it so quickly. Off of, like you'll see them pushing tier two, tier three turrets after getting only a you know a few kills. Yeah. So 0.92 combined kills per minute, which is the highest combined kills per minute. Uh, in the LPL, it's also the highest combined kills per minute that anyone has had in the LPL for the past couple years. So they play faster than the Chinese aggression meme that happened a couple years ago. <laughs> uh, and it is often through just picking three winning lanes and an invading jungler, and they often just fall into victory that way mm -hmm. because Rookie is so dominant. I feel like they run into it. I yeah. don't know about falling charge. Into yeah, sorry, charge into victory. <laughs> but Rookie is so dominant in the mid lane, uh, sometimes having a double-digit CSD average throughout most of the season. The Shy does similar things in the top lane, yeah. especially when he gets his hands on Camille playing carries. Uh, Ning, the jungler, has the most jungle kills in the LPL, also the most jungle deaths in the LPL. He's so making stuff happen. There's a lot of controversy around how good Ning really is because all his lanes smash, but he also plays super up-tempo yeah. uh, and is the one who always has to die in team fights. If you think about it, carry top lane or rookie in the mid lane, super aggressive pushing bottom lane with Jackie Love as well. The prodigy who, you know, isn't actually better than Uzi, but is still really good. Uh, and they just do that against every single team to win. But as you mentioned, they always lose seemingly to RNG. So when the game does slow down, since they smash everyone so often, there are questions of how well they can play slow. Well, specifically for this group, um, they are going to be playing against 100 Thieves, who is a very slow team, mm -hmm. um, and is gonna have like it's such a it's such a hard matchup just to begin with because of how strong IG have been. But then you have also the the big difference in styles. Mm -hmm. and I want to see if 100 Thieves are going to try and draft to compensate for this super early game and actually you know, play for skirmishes um, and fight over the early vision with them, or if they'll try and actually draft for a late game and say that they're going to take an early deficit uh, and try and come out on top later, you know, in one of those team fights, um, you know, 20 something minutes into the game, I think, try and push it to that point. I think if they do that, there's no way they make it to, to the 20 something minute team fight. Against uh, but if, but you think if they do draft early game and they do, you know, I try think, and plan early I routes, think it's doomed so against you IG. think there's just no way. Yeah. I think, I well, think, come on, you gotta, you, you can't just say there's no way we got, okay. What is the, uh, I mean, most the, the, possible. I, th I think the way. most possible way right. is playing to their strengths and and playing for a later game style and and trying to, uh, you know, yes, they're probably going to get a bit behind, but if you can hold that deficit and, and not allow it to explode, then hey, I think that their macro play is very good late game, and I think that they can team fight fairly well late game. Um, so I think that's probably their their most likely path to victory. But most likely to me against against IG is like five or ten percent chance that they're that they're winning those games. I think it's I think it's really low. For 
400 thieves against IG. Yeah. I think stylistically, it's really hard for them because they usually fall behind, even in most of their their NA games, against teams that are so much worse at playing this early game style. Like the LPL in general uh, was, you know, when everyone was talking about blue side being super OP, they had a mm -hmm. higher higher win rate on red side. Uh, and they were playing that style with counter picks and lane dominance better than I think anyone else in the world. And I think IG is the best of all of those teams at doing that style too. So I think it's uh, an exceptionally hard matchup, uh, 400 Ds. All right, what about this then? We got Caps versus Rookie. That is Rookie, tight. a lot of people say best mid laner in the entire world. Yeah. Yep. Caps? Best mid laner in Europe. MVP of Europe. Coming for that title. We got a lot of MVPs This is, this this is like a just mega mid lane matchup here. Uh, I, can't, I can't wait to watch Caps against Rookie with all the hype that comes out from Caps and especially whenever I talk about DeFisho talking about this guy. But also, Fnatic actually has a lower average game time than IG. Mm -hmm. They're under 30 minutes for the regular season. So these are two extremely fast playing teams. I do wonder if Fnatic slows down when Reckless is in the lineup yeah. compared to Bwipo in the bottom line when they're they playing do. a different style. But Fnatic, super aggressive as well. Yeah, and especially since Reckless does traditionally like to play a lot of the super scaling uh, Astana, AD carries. Diver. So it's not even like it would probably be an early game AD carry, even if they did, you know, a new marksman. Of course, I, they're definitely going to have Whippo there as well um, for possible changes, whether it is top or bottom yeah. or whatever. But uh, the bottom lane mages have really fallen out of style. I mean, mm -hmm. we do still see Swain, but he's kind of the main. Yeah, I think if they play Whippo, it'll be to spell Soaz in top lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I think too. Because my, my problem with it is, so I still think it can work. Like when Afrika like, has the same player playing a marksman or a Swain, then you can't really necessarily like preempt that in draft. If you bring in Whippo now and you have Whippo Soaz, you're like, okay, well, they're going to play something wacky bot. If we think Swain is the only one that's actually good, well, you ban Swain, right? Like, and then that's not really a, a big issue. And we've seen Fnatic try some more recently some things. Like, we were watching the Galio game, and that was uh, pretty tragic, mm -hmm. uh, playing the Galio Alistar bot lane. Uh, I believe that was against Vitality, if I'm recalling correctly. But, um, you know, I, I think it gets harder to use Wibbo in that bot lane role, which does kind of take away one of their advantages. But, I mean, Reckless uh, is an incredible marksman player, and I think that that'll be a very exciting uh, matchup in the bottom lane as well because I also think that is pretty differing in styles. You know, he likes to play the late game stuff. Jackie Love's most played is Lucian. He actually played uh, 15 Lucian games mm -hmm. in summer, and then he plays a lot of Varus as well. So he plays a ton of lane dominant style. It's not that he can't play other things also. And uh, admittedly, his Lucian games were mostly earlier in the summer split. But uh, I do think that there's very diverging styles amongst all the players. And uh, I give Fnatic a much better chance than I do 100 Thieves, I think. Oh yeah, especially because you have you have caps in the mid lane. Like that guy is such a difference maker, and we've seen that he can match up against the very best mids in the world at MSI. You know, he was playing incredibly well, and I felt like, uh, you know, MSI for caps was kind of his his coming out to the world and and, and showing that he really is a top tier international mid, not just mm -hmm. within Europe. He's one of the best in the whole world, and I think this is another opportunity for him to kind of prove that once again and and maybe even challenge for the title of perhaps, you know, one of the best, if not the best, made in the world. I think that this is actually a pretty good group for Fnatic, all things yeah. considered. I think they match up favorably with 100 Thieves because of the early game. I think the regions in their group are actually favorable for them. The fact that it's NA, EU, uh, and LPL already in this group, that means G2, C9, EDG can't get drawn in there from the play-in. So mm -hmm. this will most likely be what uh, is perceived to be the weakest play-in team that comes in, uh, whether it would be G-Rex or one of the emerging regions if they pull off an upset. So that puts Fnatic pretty solidly as the number two in this group based yeah. on projections. I have a way too early power ranking that I would never reveal entirely publicly, but I have Fnatic as sixth uh, best okay. team in the world coming in. So they're deserving of the pool one seed. Yeah. I think IG is better than them, yeah. but it's not to a point where I don't see Fnatic possibly winning a game against them, right? Yeah. Fnatic in Europe has so many individual outplays. And yes, IG, probably better at most of those individual outplays, but in a best of one, 
absolutely capable of getting a few fights going your way and taking a game. Totally. I mean, you only need a quick picture. Of that, you only uh, need. Uh... I got it. Who wants it? <laughs> you only tweet it out. You only need. You only need one. Like like you say, right? You know, if they're playing a best of seven or something, I think IG wins almost every time. Probably. Uh, I actually think IG is. I think yeah, probably. Well, them or Afrika, they're both insanely good pool two seeds. Um, but either way, I think IG is favored, but. Caps has one incredible game, you know, Reckless gets to late one game, takes on a team fight, whatever, then I, I think Fnatic can win because I do think they have more of a chance than 100 Thieves do really at, at kind of winning on, on that individual level. Uh, mm -hmm. And sometimes that's all it takes, right? If you get ahead enough and you are a team that knows how to close, then uh, one mistake uh, where Caps gets a triple kill or something in an in a early dragon fight, okay, well, maybe they yeah. win that game. Uh, I do uh, want to put a word of warning with with caps he has amazing potential but when you look at msi when he was trying too hard to carry uh he had the most deaths in the tournament yeah of any player that was there and there are definitely moments where he thinks he can do everything and then actually does get himself in trouble those are the things he needs to be able to clean up because rookie and ig will punish that in a split second yeah. so it's going to be a, a big proving point for caps for sure i like that caps is always ready to take uh you know whatever fight or challenge is delivered to him but if fanatic are drafting for a late game reckless then they have to keep that in check mm -hmm. right yeah if, if you know he wants to go and have these duels with ricky or the two on twos with the the mid jungle um you know that that's super exciting for us to watch and i definitely want to see yeah. how those turn out but they they have to keep in mind for the overall team uh, like if they're drafting around a uh, late game bottom lane, then uh, yeah. don't don't necessarily no vein mid fight every single no vein mid. You're fight. banned from it. Yeah. Well, that's one of the main <laughs> selling points of Fnatic is how they are a very versatile team, and they will have a game plan and a lineup specifically tailored to beating that team. So that that's what they can do with Whippo reckless so as right they have kind of three different looks whether it's so as in the top lane Whippo in the top lane or reckless in bottom lane or Whippo in bottom lane so we don't know what they would think is the best option going up against ig or against 100 thieves because as far as those like, like versatility goes it's great in the elcs regular season where you can pull out these different lineups and mm -hmm. then still outperform them and then also have the stylistic advantage but uh sometimes when you're that versatile it hurts you because you haven't necessarily refined that one style enough to potentially take a game off the best team. Uh, either way, though, anything else to say about this group? You're feeling pretty good, I think. It's yeah. a good draw for Fnatic. I think it's a decent draw for Fnatic. It could definitely be better, right? But I think the fact that they're unlikely to get a stronger fourth team in here, they should have a pretty good chance of getting it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just about as, as good of a group as you can get. Like, I, IG, you know, obviously is incredibly strong, but them getting in there means you're, you're blocked from getting EDG. I think that 100 Thieves is is one of the weaker on, on the pool two uh, teams. So I, I do think it's it's a really good shot of them getting out. And and that's that would feel really good uh, after them getting out of MSI as well. So certainly some potential for them. But I do agree. I was kind of joking about the Vayne pick. But when I think about that game and some of those crazy picks, it's like, so while a lot of people remember, you know, it was against Misfits, he picks Vayne mid. And everyone remembers the, the play where it's like Han Sama jumping at him at Tristana and he condemns him out of the air and kills him, yeah. right? But like they were down like 10K. And and against yeah. a team that played it a tiny bit better, the game would have just ended and everyone would be like, well, Caps is trolling on that Vayne mid. But I was like, ah, Vayne mid is the best. <laughs> uh, what's, your, what's your percentages for this group for percentage that uh, each team would finish first? I give I give IG off the top of my head like seventy percent eighty percent chance. Oh, I, I think was, it's I think I was really going eighty five. I think yeah. for IG yeah seventy or eighty for me probably I guess eighty. You go eighty. Yeah, I, I go I go like I go seventy. Yeah, they're they're super good. They're they're eighteen and one record actually had a lot of game losses. Mm -hmm. uh, even though they'd always win the best of three, they did drop a lot of games in between. So if they if they go in a little underprepared against even a hundred thieves game, like it's possible that hundred thieves plays spoiler to some of these guys. I wouldn't be too surprised if hundred thieves takes a game off fanatic. I'd be a little more surprised if they took a game off IG, but it's something they can do. Uh, and even though I don't think hundred thieves will make it out of the group. And to, to speak about, you know, like we talk about, you know, well, you talked about caps kind of having some of those games where he is trying going too far and kind of trying too hard. And, and I think of, of Jackie Love, and I do think he has some of those games uh, as well. Um, you know, I think back to spring and in playoffs, him like trying to flash forward under turrets and things like this and finish off kills. And, 
you know, even when he did trade, it was like, oh, you traded your life out when you're full health and you use a summoner. Uh, so there, there are times where he goes too far. And, and I think that, you know, anytime you have really young players and you're bringing them on this stage with incredible amounts of pressure, that can change the way you play and, uh, and that can mess things up. And, and I guess the last thing to mention about IG, because we never really talked about Duke, um, but mm. Duke actually did play more games than the Shy in summer. Um, so I'm going to be very interested to see how they actually decide to utilize him. Because when I watch IG, I just straight up think the Shy is better. Um, mm-hmm. I think that the team performs better with him. Um, but my my kind of understanding or my assumption on why they use Duke is they have to give less resources to him. So it's kind mm-hmm. of a different look on how you can play the game. Yeah, I, I've heard of that a lot too. And in the sample of games that I have seen, I, Shy, the Shy has played pretty well when he didn't have pressure. Yep. Um, and has been able to avoid a decent amount of games. He can ganks. play tanks too. I, I just think he's better. But so, I don't. I don't. I don't really get why they're playing Duke more. To be honest, but yeah. yeah. Um, I definitely think that uh, Fnatic have a really good shot here, though. And specifically, uh, I don't think people give Broxa a lot of credit, but I think he's been right. extremely good. And again, since I got so excited about all the old Lee Sin players playing Lee Sin, I looked up all of the jungler accounts in Korea. For to see, you know, who's practicing it. Mm-hmm. None of the North American LCS junglers uh, I found on their OPGD accounts had Lee Sin games, but Broxa, Svenskeren, Broxa Kobe? had number one. Even Svenskeren, or at least the account that I found, didn't have uh, Lee Sin games huh. in the top like seven most played champions. Okay. But Broxa was number one. Okay. So yeah. I definitely want to see him pull it out again. Broxa is super solid. Hillsong had a great year as well. First team support uh-huh. playing with really two different good. bot lane players. He's actually uh, super good. The Fnatic lineup is very talented across the board in the European LCS. We'll see how it transfers into the world stage here. Anything else you want to say about Group D before we wrap this up? Good luck. Group stage in general. Who's your Who's your favorite for Worlds? Are, are you both RNG? RNG? I, but I but I think I think barely RNG over over KT. And I just, I want to feel like I I have I, IG up there. Afrika, that's probably my top four. Really, you don't have a uh, Genji anywhere close. Maybe I the recency bias, uh, like watching that. Afrika slammed them in playoffs. Yeah, but I don't know. I that they're just... really good too. It's not that they're not close. That would just be my top four. Okay. Uh, Genji would probably be. I probably have them fifth, right? But like, yeah. Um, th- those would probably be my favorites. I have. I think I have RNG as the as the favorite overall. Uh, KT certainly up there, and then the next tier down would probably be uh, I- IG Afrika, pretty close, and then maybe Genji right behind them. Did you actually get a picture of my power rankings, or was my hand covering it? I got a picture. Really? Yeah. Oh man. Well, I'll give you my. I'm top- not. I'll give you my top six. Okay. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna spoil it. Yeah. So I, don't, I don't want I don't you get, getting the card. You can't get, get the likes for yeah. that. Yeah, I got to tweet it. All right. Uh, top six. I said KT is the favorite. Okay. Then I got RNG, huh. IG, Afrika, Genji, and Fnatic. Yeah, that's, that's top six. That, that's reasonable. I think that y'all just uh, going by the standings of the regional league. Although tier list wise, I think the top five are the contenders for the world championship. Yeah, Fnatic is just outside that, in my opinion. Yeah. What about TL? How close? How where you got them, Jet? I can't give you the whole list, man. I'm just asking for one it's more. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. They are they are one slot below Flash Wolves oh, right now. Okay. Because I think people underrate Betty. Yeah. It's interesting though, because but like, I'm watching a lot more vods after this. We got like two weeks yeah. left before Worlds. I like your top six, but I do think that the top, to me the top five feels like there's a tier there, and mm-hmm. then the next tier starts. And Fnatic, yeah. I think, is probably at the top of that tier. But I think there's a grouping of teams there that uh, are all quite comparable. And I think TL is in that. I think that Flash Wolves is in that. I agree. Um, so I think it's going to be really interesting uh, to see uh, how expectations actually kind of play out. Cause I do think almost everyone has, I have not heard a single person say anything other than KTR RNG for favorites for worlds, but we know how that kind of played out with King zone last year. Everyone thought King zone was going to slam got destroyed by Sam. I asked flame. He was here to, uh, pick the, or well, I didn't hear that. So and my statement remains. He true. said RNG or, uh, Genji. Oh, okay. I can respect it. I mean, I mean, they're returning world champions. Returning world champions yeah. So not I'm sure, I'm sure that that's, some people think that they could win, but uh, overwhelmingly. I just wanted to say that, that because Azilla said he had not heard any other yeah. uh, options. Uh, now true. you have heard. I now have. you have heard. That's true. So <laughs> what are uh, your options, Kobe? Uh, I really, I, I'm a, on the IG hype chain. Uh, Ooh, but, for okay. favorites? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like I, it. You're I, bold. I really... Uh, am super biased for uh, rookie. Oh. No, not yeah, yeah. I know <laughs> we can combine our fanboy yeah, powers. Yeah. 
Um, I'm a fanboy, but I didn't, I'm not as big a fanboy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, yeah, I, that's, that's kind of like wishful thinking for uh, kind of picking a dark horse, I guess, because everybody is just saying year of RNG, you know, they, they've won mm -hmm. all the international tournaments leading up to it. So that's the go-to answer. And maybe I'm just trying to get outside of that answer. And IG is just yeah. so, you know, I'm trying to be a hipster, exactly. trying to say, ooh, IG, they haven't <laughs> been at MSI, wait yeah, for yeah, them. Yeah. They were really close to winning the finals. Uh, I think that'll do it for Dive Live Group. They were, though. They had two exposed they inhibitors, really too. Oh, they got Baron in what that team game. Fight? It was Ring so winnable. I was hurt or something. He didn't even get to play, and they yeah. barely lost in the semifinals. Let's yeah. pull up the bracket no, one more now. time for the yeah. group for, for playing and for the main thing. Production is probably like, why is he asking for that instead of asking for the role? But I want to go over them just one last time uh, for everyone watching the show. We will get them very be Soon. careful with asks. I mean, you never know. I mean, I asked for KT to win LCK last year. They didn't do it. I asked we for LCK go over to them. I won that win. set. Yeah, sure. Uh, right there. Oh, Here we go. Perfect. This is the play and draw. Never you obviously it. have the top teams, EDG, G2, C9, and G-Rex at the top of the groups. We mentioned earlier that Gambit is probably pretty happy about that. They're a pool two team in group D. Gonna have to watch out for Supermassive as well, who has uh, traditionally been very strong in a lot of these play-in events. Yep. That's fair too. Basically, uh, Fenerbahce, 1907 Fenerbahce, or was it 1904 Fenerbahce? 1907. 1907? Did, could, I didn't, say it, didn't say it enough time yeah. <laughs> to get it in my brain. That's burned into my brain. Yeah, uh, so that's the play-in draw. Uh, the group draw, though, which we spent most of the time discussing, discussing right here, was... Right here. Headlined by Flash Wolves, RNG, KT, Rolster, and Fnatic. Uh, definitely going to be so exciting. I, I, yeah. It feels crazy that Worlds is already upon us because I, I already, I always feel like the year just starts and then Worlds is randomly there. Uh, but I'm actually ridiculously excited for some of these yeah. games to get going. Group yeah. of Death, RNG, Gen.G, and Vitality. Liquid in that group with KT Rolster and Mad. And then Fnatic, who we just talked about with Hunter Peas and Invictus and whoever comes in from the play-in draw. Man, the play-ins this year also are, I'm just, I know I'm already gonna start getting excited because last time, Cloud9, they didn't drop a game. But are you nervous this, this time? This time, gonna build up even further. I, I always get super excited for Worlds, even though, um, you know, all the LPO and LCK fans are like, you're stupid, why are you getting excited? <laughs> Every single year, you guys are not as good. I'm like, I, I know that we're underdogs. That doesn't mean I can't still get excited. Underdogs yeah, yeah. are allowed to also get excited. It's, it's just more because fun. you're an underdog doesn't you're mean excited. you're a loser, Kobe. Exactly. An Albus yeah. Knox Luna Except support. Unfortunately, once said that. we are usually the loser. But not this year. <laughs> not I will this not year. stand for it again. Nobody knocks NA out of groups. How many years? Eight times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It will not happen. All right. So please join us for playing October 1st. Our cover starts at 1 a.m. Pacific time. We got some other stuff that I want to let you guys know about as well. We'll be doing a world's top 20 show. So same panel as last year, ranking the mm -hmm. world's top 20. This year we're doing it after playing. So that's going to be at 10, uh, 10, 8. So October 8th at 8 p.m. Pacific time. And the next dive episode is going to be after the group stage which is gonna be uh, airing on October 19th. Group stage starts obviously before then, the dive is after the eight day long group stage. So it's time for Worlds, it's gonna be help, hype. Thank it's you guys gonna for joining. Be help. It's early on in the morning right now. We, You guys did a great job, this is gonna be fun. You did a great job. See you Worlds. Yeah. Good job everyone. <laughs> you too. You're boy. helping. I should work on these outdoors <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs>